Today's video is sponsored by Manscapes.com. And now for my Snatch Game performance. Ugh, I'm bored. Thank you. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Bastina, and welcome back to Hot or Rot, the show that's now over half as long as the actual TV show that it's reviewing. These sure are some crazy times we live in. Anywho, today we'll be reviewing episode four of RuPaul's Drag Race season 15. Our 14 remaining contestants were split into two groups down the middle for a double dose of Snatch Game. And the runway category was Beautiful Nightmare. So we'll be breaking down each queen's performance in the episode as I saw it and going through some of the Twitter drama that was percolating up on the Twitter webs as the episode aired. We've got Spice versus Marsha, what apparently was cut from that lip sync, public apologies from some of the queens for their performances. And we'll also be taking a look at some tweets from celebrities who acknowledged their impersonations on this episode. Now, we've got a lot to cover today, so buckle up. But first, let's talk about hair. You've got it, I've got it. And I'm proud to say I've trusted Manscaped to take care of my down there hair for over a year now with the waterproof and cordless lawnmower 4.0. And today we celebrate because Manscaped's disrupting the beard market with the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, which includes the Beard Hedger trimmer that has a powerful 7200 RPM motor and titanium coated T-blade that can cut through even the thickest of hair in one single stroke. And check this out. You can choose from over 20 different hair cutting links with the zoom wheel that uses only one guard. Want longer facial hair? Zoom out. Shorter? Zoom in. Plus, the Beard Hedger is waterproof and cordless, just like the Lawnmower 4.0. Also, in the Beard Hedger Pro Kit are dermatologist tested products like the Manscaped Beard Oil infused with sweet almond, sunflower, and jojoba seed oil, Beard Shampoo and Leave in Conditioner, and the Beard Balm for styling. And you can get the Beard Hedger Pro Kit for 20% off with free international shipping when you shop manscapes.com slash bussy. Plus you'll get these free gifts. The beard brush, comb, scissors, and travel case. That's 20% off plus free international shipping when you shop with promo code bussy at manscapes.com. Thanks Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Now let's take a look at this hairy situation. First up, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Who in Snatch Game impersonated Tim Gunn? Hmm. Make it work. And Tim Gunn, if you don't know, is a famous American personality known for his takes on fashion and also appearance on fashion-based shows like Project Runway. We saw five responses from Marsha in this Snatch Game, and about four and a half of those, I'd say, were received as funny by Rue. And honestly, when I was watching through this the first time, I was actually so gooped by her illusion that I didn't know who the hell this was. And this, I think, was both good for Marsha because it proved how great at makeup and illusion characterization and acting she can truly be, but also bad? Because again, I'm just not totally sure who Marsha is yet, besides a great actor. But she definitely made it work. This was hot. However, over on the runway, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Category is beautiful nightmare, but I think she forgot the beautiful part. She's giving the little girl from Finding Nemo in the dentist's office who's like tapping on the fish tank. Piranha. It's like that meets arts and crafts class after school special. And to her credit, she did tweet out an explanation for what was, or I should say what wasn't going on here. And she said, that was not the vision I had for that runway in the slightest. That was an incredibly simplified version I had to throw together 24 hours before I left because a designer flaked on me. So sure, I'd like to see the fully realized version of whatever the hell this was supposed to be, but as presented, it's a Next up, don't we all wish we were Amanda Lepore? Well, I guess we can keep dreaming because Lux is Amanda Lepore in this Snatch Game. The illusion, fabulous. She did an excellent job, firstly I have to say, on the prosthetics and commitment to makeup and illusion that Amanda Lepore has. She, if you don't know, is an NYC nightlife legend. Also fun fact, her birth certificate was apparently lost in a hospital fire and nobody knows how old she is. Not even her. So I was pretty gooped when Lux this episode calls out Trinity's prior impersonation of Amanda Lepore as not being that good. And this, it seems, did not go unnoticed by Miss Trinity the Tuck. Lux, while the episode was airing, tweeted, liking and laughing at tweets about how my Snatch Game was horrible and how I'm arrogant and delusional won't make yours any more memorable or funnier. Because it wasn't, lol. Lux was seemingly here referencing the fact that Trinity had liked some tweets on Twitter, like this one, which said, crazy for Lux to say that Trinity the Tuck bombed her first Snatch Game when she didn't even give us any jokes. You gotta pay respect to the queens who paved the way first before for being that annoyingly arrogant. And finally, Trinity the Tuck clapped back on Twitter writing 11 wins dot 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 still waiting for at least one. Done with this conversation. Mind you, I didn't throw the first punch, but I'm no punk. Y'all already know. You talk sh 
you get a reply. Like there is one thing about Lux that has been true episode to episode, and that is that she has and radiates confidence in everything she does. But that confidence didn't translate to a larger than life Snatch Game performance. She was almost dead in the eyes. And the vocals she was giving were very muted. We saw three responses from Lux as Amanda, and one of which was received well by the judges. And confidence, I think will take Lux far in this competition, but she'll need to start putting some money where her mouth is. This Snatch Game was a rat. On the runway though, it's hard to give somebody so beautiful any notes. She says she's giving Bride, whose husband threw in the river and drowned her. A tale as old as time. She literally looks like she has just crawled up from the bottom of a lake and is dragging a cinder block tied onto a rope down the runway. And fun fact, she let us know on Twitter that she actually made her runway from top to bottom and her parents made the cinder block. She did acknowledge that the tights could definitely have been more gray, but she had to spray paint ones on set last minute because oddly enough, I couldn't find a pair of gray tights anywhere. She's looking like a drowned, harassed rat and she couldn't look better. This look is hot. Next up, Malaysia baby doll Fox, who this weekend's Snatch Game gives us a little Saucy Santana impersonation. And Saucy Santana, if you don't know, is quite the saucy character. He actually first came to notoriety as the City Girls makeup artist, but now makes his own music and is famous for the Material Girl song that was going viral on TikTok. And Saucy, I think, was a really bold choice for Malaysia, who I do kind of see as a more demure, sweet, calmer type of personality. So I think she definitely gave herself a challenge, but we really didn't get to see a lot of what she gave. We were shown only two responses from her saucy, one of which was received well, the intro where she taught Rue the phrase gummy, which of course is self-explanatory. No teeth. And it's not really her fault we didn't get to see all of her material, girl. So I'd give this Snatch Game performance a warming up. And over on the runway, she says she is giving us living, walking, beauty, dead fantasy. <laughs> Literally beautiful nightmare, but if you looked up those two words in a thesaurus and we're trying to make the word count. And that's not a knock. I'm just laughing at how she described her look. She's in this gorgeous monochromatic lavender, I think the color is. I'm a little colorblind. The runway lights really mess with my cones and rods. But my God, does she look absolutely gorgeous. She's giving a perfectly proportionized silhouette and I love those feathers all around her body, the hair sculpted. The nightmare component of this brief though, I think she kind of skimped out on. That half of what this runway should be is really only present in her makeup. I think she could have pushed the boundary a little bit further and brought some of those nightmarish elements into the actual costuming. But the actual presentation of what she's wearing is drop dead gorgeous. This look is hot. What happens in bed? Vegas apparently dies there. Next up, breaking news, we've got a new mommy. Uh, <laughs> she told us on Instagram last week that she has apparently adopted the twins into her drag house. Writing, getting the opportunity to expand my drag family has been the greatest unexpected blessing to come from my time on RuPaul's Drag Race. You all know what drag family means to me, so just know I don't play when it comes to my daughters. I love you both, sugar and spice, and I'm so proud of all your accomplishments and that I get to experience this moment in time with you both. The family that drags together stays together. Oh, and my producers are telling me Hallmark just bought the rights to the movie. Anyways, in Snatch Game, Mistress did Rosie O'Donnell. Kind of. She also kind of turned this Rosie into part Abby Lee Miller, part lost Jersey City sister of Michelle Visage. And from Miss Rosie Lee Miller, we saw six responses, all six of which were received well by the judges. And even though Mistress's character was kind of all over the place, it was one of my favorites tonight because we got to watch her evolve this character as the Snatch Game progressed, all the while taking no prisoners and letting the other contestants have it. For example, when she slips up about the tax evasion response and says she was thinking about about Abby Lee Miller instead of Rosie O'Donnell. She then takes the opportunity to leverage that slip up into a dig at Saucy Santana. And I wanna take this opportunity to compare Mistress's Rosie with Marsha's Tim Gunn. Marsha's Tim Gunn was clean cut perfect in every way and characterization, but lacked that Marsha stamp. While Mistress's Rosie wasn't perfect, it 100% felt like an original and authentic branded performance. Anyway, the views, great from here. This performance was hot. And over on the runway. <laughs> I particularly enjoyed Mistress's explanation of what was going on. They say we eat six spiders a year in our sleep. Those spiders laid eggs and busted through when there's webs all over me. <laughs> 
Sure, I guess. Why the hell not? Honestly, though, I'm not even sure she bought that explanation. And without it, I wouldn't know what the hell was going on with this runway. But her proportions with that cage skirt on top of that gorgeous gown are amazing. The hair, the mug, everything about Mistress on the runway is perfectly polished. I wish she had a stronger concept, but this look is absolutely hot. And next up, Anitra, who in the Snatch game did Gordinia Ramsey, a completely made up character. This person does not exist. So what we get from Anitra here is really just complete stupidity. And I think a great example of Anitra's sense of humor. She likes doing things just because they're dumb. And because RuPaul is screaming in laughter at these like two responses that we see from Gordinia, I was also laughing. Even if absent RuPaul's laughter, this Snatch game really wasn't a lot to eat. So I'll be fair here and give her a warming up. And over on the runway, spiders, spiders, they're everywhere! And this itsy bitsy spider had an excellent execution on the beautiful nightmare concept. She is very obviously a femme fatale black widow. The gown she's wearing is gorgeous, the shape is beautiful. And all this she tried something new with her hair and makeup and overall gave us a new silhouette and type of look. My small critiques here are I would love to see the gown touch the floor in the back at least and something about the proportions of the spider's abdomen seemed a little off compared with her voluptuous body but the silliness of it all is also why I liked the look, so I'd give this look a hot. And next up, we're all going to hell and Selena STTs is leading the parade. Thank God. She in Snatch Game gave us the Virgin Mary, BC, or maybe we should say WC with Christ. She was pregnant in the Snatch Game. And Mary, if you somehow don't know, is Jesus's mother from the Bible that Mary. And from Miss Selena, we saw four responses, one and a half of which I'd say was received by RuPaul well. And Selena's Virgin Mary was very interesting to me because she was, to her credit, very committed. And she, as I've commended her on in my previous videos, is great at commanding camera presence. Like even though her bits and gag of her pregnant belly weren't landing as funny, what she was doing still wasn't ultimately as cringy as some of the other bad performances we saw tonight. As we saw it, I would give this a rat. A holy moly rat. And over on the runway, nightmare? Absolutely. Good God. I thought I had accidentally switched to Dragula or The Hills Have Eyes. And I've got to say, her presentation of the look was truly unforgettable. She jumps out from behind the curtain and like attacks a chest plate sitting on the floor, then shows off this skin dress and like spooky zombie ghosty makeup. And while what she did certainly is scary, I think that she really truly missed that beautiful part completely. But I think it's worth a three flame safe hot for the dedication to the drama and giving us some good TV. Somebody's got to do it. Next up, Robin Fios, who in Snatch Game did Karen Huger. And I wasn't super familiar with this personality. She's apparently one of the housewives of Potomac. Potomac, uh, girl, however you say that word. I know, does that make me a bad gay? Like my reality TV consumption ends at RuPaul's Drag Race, My Strange Addiction, and of course the real friends of we WeHo on right after RuPaul's Drag Race at 9 p.m. Central time. My favorite show. Robin's Karen Huger though was mostly just not there. We saw two responses from her, one of which was like kind of funny at first when she says ham hock, she's tapping into that ridiculous misdirect type of humor that is successful on TV and that RuPaul enjoys. But then when Ru tries to volley with her, she just falls flat and gets kind of tongue tied explaining who she is and why she's there. Robin's Snatch Game was half baked and 100% rocked. Worth noting though that she did apologize <laughs> her performance on Twitter, writing, I'm gonna just apologize to Karen Heger in advance for my attempt at her for Snatch Game on RuPaul's Drag Race. Karen, I love you, I am a la dam. And Karen actually replied to this, writing, no need for apologies, I'm honored, darling. Fabulous. And over on the runway, Robin says she is looking like that tarantula bitch that will inward your husband. And you'll say she's gorgeous. She is another spider, another Black Widow concept. Y'all, it is an epidemic. Her interpretation though is at least a little different from Mistresses and Anitra's. She's kind of giving more almost like black swan ballerina fantasy black widow and i've got to say like i knew what she was immediately and this is a beautiful execution on this beautiful nightmare brief oh the webs we weave this look is hot and next up lucy you ain't got no splaining to do this week oh my god in snatch game she did joan rivers the late comedian and gay icon well known for insult comedy presence on fashion police and of course plastic surgery and when i saw lucy was doing joan my immediate reaction was uh oh 
we've seen a very successful Joan before. Jimbo on Canada's Drag Race did excellently with this character. Smell my finger! Lucy had quite the challenge in front of her, however, she completely steamrolled it and blew us all away. We saw like six-ish responses from her, all of which were received well by the judges. The physical illusion, combined with the characterization of Joan with the mannerisms and speech patterns, was top tier next level, like she was 100% running circles around the other girls, and appropriately insulting them while she did it. She even stole one of Spice's earlier responses, Miley's foam finger, just to quote, make fun of the dumb bitch in the front. Joan's husband's super position was apparently at the neighbor's house, but Lucy's was on top tonight. This performance was hot. And by the way, if you're new here, I just want to quickly bring to your attention the icons that are present on runways and challenges. Those are the avatars of my patrons who are a part of my Patreon family at patreon.com slash bussyqueen who support me every single month at the hottest hot tier or higher and have voted for that respective challenge or runway as their hottest hot for the week. And if you thought Lucy's Snatch Game was killer, take a look at her runway. She's giving an homage to Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. And I've got to say this look is amazing in the presentation of silhouette and body oddy oddy that Lucy knows how to serve. I'd ask how's her head, but girl, she gives great head, even when dead. My small critique on this look is, I want it a little more scary from this, like it's almost a little too perfect and pretty, but that is just kind of Lucy's drag. And I like that she pushed her boundary a bit here and dipped into the dark side. This runway is hot. Next up, legends only, it's Sasha Colby, who in Snatch Game was doing Jan Crouch. She's a late religious fanatic, Christian televangelist, and based off the photos of her, possibly a drag queen. RuPaul does say you're born naked and the rest is drag. Anywho, Sasha is one of the queens tonight who just did not get any love from the edit in either direction, really? Besides the two responses we saw from her, both of which were well received. So I'd say she could have done more, but it's hard to say if she actually did or didn't. Calling Ross a sodomite though, always a win in RuPaul's book. I'll give this performance a hot. And over on the runway. Oh my God, she looks gorgeous, but what's new? I wish I could show more of her look in my video, but you know, YouTube ad restrictions and all. Now that she had a different concept, she is giving witch, she's giving broomstick amongst this pile of black widow spiders everywhere you look. And overall, I think she did a great job contrasting nightmarish, hideous ugliness with immaculate beauty. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. This look is hot. Next up, Jax, who's I think lucky a picture says a thousand words tonight. She's the Mona Lisa, you know, the eyebrowless nymph from the Louvre. And we saw her give two responses, the intro, which was funny because she made a silly face. And the second of which also got a laugh from Rue because she was willing to play into the joke about oil. So I'd say what we saw from Jax as Mona Lisa was fine, but was there more to this Mona than a goofy little smile? Meh. Oh, my lipstick literally going on my chin from that. Goofy. I've got to fix that. Regardless, I'll give Jax a <laughs> Oof, crisis averted. You know, they say beauty is pain and that's true, but nobody ever talks about the price of being a goofy little girl. Eh. Anyways, over on the runway. That was my parcel tongue. Um, wow, this runway totally caught me off guard. I did not expect Jax to come out in full, like, Voldemort snake face prosthetics. Like, the presentation of this look is so cool, and everybody else really went so dark with their beautiful nightmares, and as scary of a nightmare that she looks like, she was also able to find ways to lean into the beauty of this character she's presenting on the runway. She's voluptuous, and is kind of giving, like, clay pot with the drawings from Greece, but also Grecian goddess and Medusa with the flowy white robes. This look is poisonously hot. And next up, something sweet. Sugar! Who in Snatch Game did Trisha Paytas? I've gotta say, I loved the shady edit of them including the comment that she makes in the workroom prior to Snatch Game when she says, I know internet personalities always bomb into oblivion, but Sugar is here to change that. Oh, Sugar. So unfortunately, she did not change that. <laughs> We saw four responses from her Trisha Paytas, none of which were received well by Rue. And my take on why Sugar's Trisha didn't work here was because I think Sugar was trying too hard to be Trisha Paytas. But the thing is, I don't think Trisha herself is inherently funny. The comedy from Trisha Paytas, YouTuber extraordinaire and the internet troll of our generation, comes from shock value. She's really more funny in retrospect, like when you look back at her eras of being super religious and Christian, or when she was a 
chicken nugget. There was just nothing Sugar was doing to latch onto besides being annoying. For example, at one point, Rue asks Jax a question that Sugar interrupts, but she isn't even able to get out the complete sentence of what she wants to say before Lucy as Joan Rivers interrupts and finishes her sentence, stealing her thunder. So yeah, Sugar's Trisha was not sweet. This was a rock. And Trisha was one of the impersonated personalities who acknowledged what happened on Snatch Game on Twitter, writing, Trending, thank you, Sugar, for bringing me back from the cyber world grave. Relevant again for another 15 minutes. Like a fabulous cockroach, I keep coming back. She sure does. And Sugar there wrote, oh my bimbo queen, you are and always will be relevant. Trisha also wrote, I mean, I'm a little insulted it took 15 seasons to be impersonated on Snatch Game, but I suppose that had to be done by the prettiest, snatchiest queen and truly no one else, but Miss Sugar could have done me justice. Sugar wrote, the most Trisha thing to do was to troll Rue and everyone on the set, the girls that get it, get it. Love you, Icon. If only there was something to get. Anyways, on the runway tonight, Sugar says that she is channeling all the creepy porcelain dolls at her grandma's house. She's that pretty little perfect doll walking down the runway who's a little bit creepy, a little bit of a night Nightmare, not even a nightmare. This is a little bit of a flash of something scary. And like on one hand, I love how I guess on brand it was of her to not lean into the nightmare part of this runway brief. But I think it's also fair to critique that this runway is mostly just beautiful. And the supposed nightmarish part of her runway presentation is just the slightly spooky makeup. So yeah, she looks great, but because it's off brief, I'm gonna give this a And next up, get up. <laughs> we had Spice, Miss Spicity Spicy Spice doing Miley Cyrus, or Goofy, I, I guess, from, you know, the Goofy movie. <laughs> so I actually had high hopes, or I guess I should say at least medium aspirations, for Spice's Miley during the very first part of the Snatch Game. She was kind of more leaning into the Hannah Montana era, but this only lasted for her intro line, and then she switched into, like, Bangers era Miley. And I could tell from at that point that it was just all gonna be downhill from here. And in saying that, I'm realizing I kind of have the same note for her on Snatch Game that I had for Sugar. Had Spice, I think, picked one era of Miley to really lean into and master, she could have been a little more successful. And then the responses that she was giving as Miley were wild. And it's almost like the less that Rue and the other queens were reacting positively to what she was doing, the more that she leaned into this cringy character. And I was like, what are you doing? Like with the Ross Matthews response, like she's hitting herself in the head with the sledgehammer hammer and just doing that thing over and over. I'm like, girl, no one is laughing. Why are you doing that? But this was to her credit, I think a little exacerbated by the edit. It went back and forth with that a lot. And I'm not sure if that was actually happening that long or if it was just the edit. We saw four responses from Spice just being Miley, none of which were funny. And y'all know I love me some Spice, but the flavor tonight, I was half expecting RuPaul to tell her she needed to tweet a RuPaulogy. But over on the runway, she's giving dead doll in a similar but different way to Sugar's kind of dead doll tonight. Spice is, I think, more leaning into the Monster High references. Actually, she's almost just totally dressed like I think her name is Draculaira based on the Googling I just did. And although I didn't necessarily know this character's name off the top of my head, I knew exactly what she was doing the second I saw it. And I love that it is 100% on brief. She is beautiful, but she's also a nightmare. She very clearly is dead. She pushed the boundary with her makeup further than, for example, her twin Sugar. And it's clear based on her outfit, makeup, and presentation that she's dead, bitch. This look is hot. Next up, Amethyst, who in Snatch Game did Tan Mom. And I'll say firstly, I think this was a great choice of character. This is somebody who everyone kind of knows in the back of their head as a strange person, I suppose. But nobody really knows who this person is or why they're famous. Like, I didn't even know that the reason she came out of obscurity and into internet fame was apparently because back in 2012, she had to take her young child into a tanning bed. Allegedly, the jury did decline to indict her. But the reason this character is such a great choice, I think, is because it's familiar yet unfamiliar enough that Amethyst can really do whatever the hell she wants with it. And we hear three responses from her, of which I'd say two and a half were received really well. This performance was so tan, she burned <sighs> And over on the runway, the judges said it best, oh my gaga, at the 2009 VMAs. She's given the gays what they want, the gays love gaga, and she did gaga well here. This was an iconic era for her when she was reinventing pop, pop culture, art, and stage presentation, and to give such a beautiful homage to that, I think was really smart of her. And the red liquid presentation coming out on top of her all white outfit was of course both good TV and fun to watch on the runway. This was, huh? And finally, 
Aura Mayari, who in the challenge gave us a little Bretman Rock for your nerves. Girl, the YouTubers are all here. <laughs> and they shouldn't be. Maybe one day someone will do me. Yeah, right. Good luck trying to make me funny. Bazinga! Anyway, Bretman, if you don't know, is a YouTuber, millions of subscribers, but really I would say he had his peak YouTube moment a couple of years ago when the beauty community was alive and thriving. Now it seems he more just is beautiful on Instagram and like, oh my God, working on that body. He looks good. Or as Bretman, we saw three responses from zero of which were funny and all of which were awkward. And then there's a really weird moment at the end of the Snatch Game where she's speaking tag long and then she says, it's a match. And then RuPaul just completely shuts her down and is like, um, we have some Filipino people in the producing room and what you said is not a match. And I was like, oh, Ru is really not willing to work with her today, girl. Like this was just a perfect example of how RuPaul can and will dictate your Snatch Game performance. But really this Bretman was just all rock and rock. On the runway though, a really beautiful reprise for Miss Aura Mayari tonight. She comes out, she's giving old Hollywood glamour, that orange hair looks gorgeous, and <gasps> she turns around, she's dead. I guess, kind of, I don't know. She's got scoliosis at least. Her entire spine is exposed. And more importantly than giving a really cool, interesting and unique look, she is playing up those theatrics, giving us the drama. Love to see it. This look is hot. But now let's talk the tea. The winner tonight is Lucy LaDuca for her Joan Rivers, no surprise. But what was surprising was I think the decision to do the format of Snatch Game in this way, where they split them into two groups and then chose one winner between two groups and all of the bottoms from just one of the groups. Like it would have made a lot more sense since they were splitting everyone up to I think do two winners and then a bottom from each. Like this would have been a great time narratively speaking to establish another front runner as well as not lose one of the twins cause let's be honest, they are a huge draw for this season. But of course part of the draw of their casting is knowing that they inevitably will be lip syncing against each other and the producers did not waste the opportunity. The bottom three, if you will, are Aura and the twins. And this is one of those moments where it kind of seems like the judges are saying that Aura's runway saves her from the bottom, which like versus Sugar, sure, I guess makes sense. But for as annoying as Sugar's Trisha Paytas was, I'm not sure she was worse than Aura's Bretman. Anyways, the twin seek is here. We all saw it coming and I did react to it over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. But watching this lip sync, firstly, I'm thinking it feels a little too soon for Sugar versus Spice. And I'm also flabbergasted in the back of my head because we saw no narrative storytelling of Sugar or Spice spices, twinness, or anything like we usually do when someone gets eliminated. So I'm like, none of this makes sense. Surely they're going to do a double save. But boy, was I wrong. We saw the twins do a fully choreographed lip sync to Pat Benatar. And in the beginning, I was thinking it was a little cheesy, but the more they leaned into the cheese and the campiness of what they were doing and playing with each other and how passionate they were, the more I loved it. Like they were having fun fun. And in result, I had fun. The contestants watching them had fun. Robin Fierce even tweeted out, when I tell you this lip sync was iconic to watch, lol, what a wild moment to live through. And it was clear even the judges were living for everything they were doing, even though Sugar had a couple of trips and falls on the runway as she was prancing around her heels. I fully expected a double Shantae. Like, how do you not reward a fully choreographed lip sync with a double Shantae? How do you not do it, Rue? And between two mostly equal performances, how do you pick who goes home and who doesn't? There's also also some drama with the edit of the lip sync, Spice tweeted this out. The way they cut our most iconic part of the lip sync when we whipped out our fake teeth and trolled TF out of them. I would have liked to seen that. And we also saw Spice call out Marsha, Marsha, Marsha on Twitter for seemingly the comment that she made in a confessional about their lip sync and can bits. Spice wrote, Miss Marsha has to stop with the quote can bits. It's called charisma boo. You should get some. And at first I thought this was just like a little sisterly read, but Marsha responded seemingly more seriously writing, I'm sorry, girly. I didn't know it was some that was upsetting you. You both have charisma for days. But yeah, Sugar has to sashay away. And we did see this nice tweet from her new drag mom, Mistress, who wrote, as you can see on my face, I'm so proud of Sugar. One moment in time does not define you. And I'm glad you were able to share a piece of yourself, not only with the world, but with me. You taught me to remember that drag should be fun. I love you so, so much. But let me know what y'all are thinking down in the comments below. Did this twin sync make sense? Should there have been different tops and bottoms considering the format of Snatch Game? And what do you think will happen next? And it's time for Hottest Hots. <laughs> 
On the runway, I'll give it to RuPaul. And for round one of Snatch Game, Mistress Isabel Brooks. And round two, of course, Lucy LaDuca. I also ask my patrons to vote on their hottest hot this week. And they've chosen Sasha Colby on the runway. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha is Tim Gunn for round one. And Lucy LaDuca is Joan for round two. And I also want to give another thanks to today's video sponsor, Manscaped, who you can check out using the link in the description of this video. Don't forget, you'll save 20% on your new Beard Hedger Pro kit when you use code BUSSY. Plus, get all those free gifts. And finally, I want to say thanks so much to my generous patrons who make my channel possible and give a special shout out to Volumes Page and Jacob Ward, who've just joined my Patreon. And they the individual, Asa Peckle, Ashley Brungart, Cyrus Daniel Sandez, Felicia Frankie, Hector Simancas, Jeffrey Steenberg, Kyle, Laura, Set, Louis Labrador, Ruff, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Mato, Panda Kitty, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Volumes Page, Wheelie, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Buzzy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. You just gotta roll with the punches. <coughs>